The white supremacy dynamic is not only putting the black male in check, but it is to inferiorize uh -huh. the behavioral functioning in order to have that sense of, look at them, and I'm superior to them. I really feel genetically inadequate, but I get a psychological kick by seeing them in a very degraded state. We continue our Holy Day commemorations today celebrating the life of the great queen of black scholarship, one of the grand master teachers, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. Now this one is a little different because it was on January 2nd, seven years ago, when she ascended. But I don't think the ancestors do anything by accident. So her passing coming at the same time as the birth dates of so many others I think it's a reminder to us to cherish these wise souls when they're with us and to remember them after they're gone. Because when you take your teachers for granted, you show that you weren't worthy of the lessons they tried to impart. Dr. Frances Cress Welsing was soft-spoken, but the truths she laid down were hard as steel and weighed tons. If Dr. Clark opened our eyes to what the enemy had done, Dr. Cress Welsing opened our eyes to what the enemy is thinking. Not his words, but his thoughts, regardless of what he may say. She also placed great emphasis on how the oppression we've endured has affected us mentally as well. The destruction of a positive image of self that is developed in black children simply by looking at television mm -hmm. or reading books. Do you see where they don't see their image and the enhancement of their image? That, and that's critical for brain-computer functioning. You see, if, I, if I'm trained not to love and deeply regard myself, then my functioning is being cut in half. Dysfunction can come about in many ways. People can develop dysfunctions naturally, but one of the main ways that it happens is due to environmental factors. This is especially true if you're talking about dysfunction within a group. And we are without question not in control of our environment, though we know exactly who is. Now, the main thing that Dr. Cress Welsing is known for, at least in academic circles, is her theory of color confrontation. But let me tell you right now, black folks know it's not a theory at all. To say theory is to imply that the idea being put forward cannot be conclusively proven. When it comes to Dr. Cress Welsing's theory of color confrontation, there's nothing theoretical about it. You see, cold fusion is a theory, as is the Big Bang. People have ideas about these things, and there's some loose bits of data and what they try to call evidence, but nobody can prove the Big Bang happened because time machines don't exist. So there is no way to know for sure how the universe actually started, and it's not as if we can see any other universes forming in front of us, so we have no way of knowing if Big Bangs have ever occurred at all. But when it comes to the behavior of white supremacists, we see it all day, every day. They tell us that they don't want race mixing because it would destroy the white race. They make it clear they don't want black people around at all because, well, there's always the threat of race mixing just because black people exist. This is exactly what Dr. Chris Welsing has said. That's not a theory. That's a proven fact. And this sick mentality is evident in every arena of this society. Dr. Chris Welsing taught how it permeates everything the white supremacist creates in ways both subtle and direct. Just take a look at sports, for example. Golf, a game in which the objective is to put a white ball deep into the dark Mother Earth. Football, a game where a ball is kicked to go between two upright posts. And there's plenty of other examples of this white supremacist neuroses as well. For example, the white supremacist obsession with guns is because, as Dr. Chris Wilson explained, when pointed downward, a handgun resembles male genitals, which is what's going through a white supremacist's mind when he calls his gun his equalizer. If black people in general, and black men in specific, have the ability to eliminate white supremacists through genetic annihilation, well, as the white supremacists see it, they have guns which gives them the ability to annihilate black people physically. This fixation saturates everything the white supremacist does. And before anyone claims that Dr. Cress Welsing was reaching or drawing loose connections, keep in mind that this is something the white media and white figures themselves have admitted to. A great man once said that everything in life is about sex, except sex. 
Sex is about power. For the record, the person that Kevin Spacey was quoting was Oscar Wilde, the famous Irish playwright. The TV show House of Cards is a political power fantasy for white males in which a middle-aged, bordering on elderly white man is snubbed for a cabinet position, and so he sets about deviously undermining his own political party and eliminating all the people above him on the political ladder, and on more than one occasion, killing some of them, including the young woman in the video clip you saw, who he was having a sexual affair with. He's also depicted being involved in a bisexual threesome with his wife and a secret service agent. And what happens after all of this debauchery and murder and such? He successfully engineers a political scandal that drives the president out, enabling him to capture the presidency for himself. This is white supremacy in a nutshell. If life for black people is that no good deed goes unpunished, then for the dominant society, the lesson is no bad deed goes unrewarded. Take a look at some of the movies which white society loves most. Films like A Clockwork Orange, Psycho, American Psycho, Silence of the Lambs. In a lot of these movies, the overarching theme is one of sexual conquest or sexual confusion, or in most cases, both. So yes, Dr. Cress Welsing was absolutely right. Sex is something the white supremacists fixate on. And you better believe it's at the front of their mind when he sees or even thinks about black people. It's why they talk about us all the time, at their own dinner tables, at their own private gatherings, even when around nothing but other white people. At settings where it makes absolutely no sense to be talking about black people, that's the main subject of conversation. Because the white supremacists have a problem. They're paranoia. And their paranoia is rooted in their recessive genes being easily erased. Whiteness is not merely an ethnographic modifier. It's also a unifying principle for those classified as white. But of course, the real glue that holds it all together is for those classified as white to have a constant reminder of how beneficial whiteness is by having a group who they can look at and either see as inferior in socioeconomic terms or whom they can look down on or both. Whiteness confers tangible as well as psychological benefits. You also manufacture a phony societal narrative where white is better than everyone else and the farther you get from white, the more inferior and worse treated in the society you are. So black people must be put at the bottom of the ladder. And if we are not there, then white supremacists have to attack us relentlessly until we are. All of the white supremacist anti-black racist rantings are merely words meant to rationalize their fear of genetic annihilation. When you attack someone for absolutely no reason whatsoever, you have to make something up to try to justify it. You say that there's something wrong with those people, regardless of if there is or isn't. You claim that they commit all the crime, and when that lie is debunked, you claim, well, they're mentally inferior. But it's all a smoke screen, white smoke that is. As long as the attention is on black people as the face of crime, quote-unquote, then nobody's paying attention to all the corporate crooks or the mass shootings or the serial killers who are overwhelmingly not black, by the way. As long as the white supremacists can begin and push phony conversations about black inferiority, they don't have to face up to how easily they can be genetically annihilated, because that terrifies the hell out of them. They don't have to admit to how fragile their genes are. White cannot be superior when something as simple as having sex with somebody erases your genes. They know they can't fix it, and they can't change it either, so to keep their minds off this reality, they've chosen to obsess over distracting themselves by pointing at black people for no reason and saying, there's something wrong with them. When in reality, the white supremacist looks at the genetic hand that he's been dealt and can't help but say to himself, there's something wrong with me. Dr. Chris Wilson did more than practically anyone to put this truth on the table. She used phrases like racism, white supremacy, all along. She wanted to make it clear what the problem was and where it was originating from. We broke the physical chains white supremacy placed on us, at least as far as the plantations went. But we still have yet to break the economic and psychological chains, and that is key to freeing ourselves. We cannot look at any of the trappings of this anti-black society as being precious. Dr. Cress Welsing wasn't reaching, and she wasn't wrong either. Her brilliance and discernment placed her in a class all by herself. I consider Dr. Cress Welsing part of the holy trinity of grandmaster teachers, right up there with Dr. Clark and Dr. Ben. 
She asked the tough questions and was strong enough to give this racist society the tough answers, too. You can't do anything but respect that, and we will do no less than to honor her. So on this day, the day of her ascension, we remember Dr. Frances Cress Welsing, the great queen of black scholarship, the grand master teacher. We thank you, Dr. Cress Welsing, and we will prove ourselves worthy of what you taught us.